Hey everyone, today we're going to be over here on the patch. Um, this is where we're going to be planting melons and cantaloupe and winter squash. And then the, the raspberry bushes are back here as well. Um, they're starting to take over, but that's okay for now. So I also want to plant corn in here. So we're going to do that. We're going to do along the fence there in a, a long block and then a long block along the fence on this side. So whenever it's all grown up, it'll look like it look like a fence of corn on both sides and you just walk in through this part and I think it's going to look really neat. So we'll see. So I have to rake back the mulch from each area and then we're planting in the native soil so that's going to be uh, challenging probably. It's really hard soil out here so I don't know if I'm going to dig it all up by hand or use an auger or what I'm going to do yet. I haven't fully decided. I'm just going to pull the mulch back and see what I think might work best. So let's come on in and get started. All righty. Move some stuff out of the way. That's drip line from last year that I need to redo because I moved the bags. So uh, another project I still haven't done. Let's get this mulch moved back and see how well we can get this corn planted. Okay, that was actually a lot of work. My hand kind of hurts from holding the rake. There's some mulch that's stuck that I can't get up with the rake, so I have to shovel that out and then plant. So let's do that. Let me go get a shovel. too big. Oh, my hand's slimy. I just wanted to show you. That's an impressively large worm. Oh, this is a lot of work. I, I'm sweating. I would have done this later in the day when the sun was going, starting to go down when it's cooler in the evening. But I wanted to do it with you, and I want to do it today. And it's supposed to start raining at four. So we're going to push through in the summer, well, it's not even summer, in the May heat and get her done. I'm just watching the worm, that massive worm. I saw another one. Oh, I see a grub. Ew. Oh, there's the grub, that's disgusting. This one's white, and look at its legs. That, can you see? That is creepy, it looks like an alien. Ew. Ew, 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 ew. It left something on my hand. That's disgusting. Okay, I think this is good enough. I think I'm gonna go get the little auger real quick. I'll be right back. All right, I got a skinny one. Might be good for the, each hole. It, it's a little big for each hole, but it'll soften up all the surrounding dirt and um, that'll be easier for the roots to grow into while they're little baby seedlings. That'll soften it up for them. And then I think I'll plant them, I think you're supposed to plant corn like six inches apart. And I might do six inches, I might do a little closer. I always do a little closer on everything, so we'll see. Gotta get this on and tightened. Okay. Done with the holes, time to plant the seed. Oh, 
Okay, this clay soil is too, I feel like it's too um, dense to put back over the top of the seeds. So I'm gonna sprinkle something light and fluffy over the top of these holes. I don't know if this is the best thing to do, but I know this clay soil is not great. All right, I'm gonna give these a good water. And I'm gonna leave the mulch pulled back until they germinate. And then I'll put the mulch back around them. All right, gotta do the other side now. Found two more grubs, just like the one from earlier. The exact same. If you watch this, uh, the video, uh, strawberries in a laundry basket, you would have, um, I, I showed you a grub I found and it was different. It was like all gray. I mean, it was big, but these are different. These are white and they have legs. And so they probably turn into a different kind of beetle. Um, either way, they're not welcome here. So I'm gonna have to kill them and that's pretty violent. So I guess I'll do that off camera. Just kidding, I know that's not violent, but I did go ahead and squish them off camera. It's kind of upsetting. I brought all the mulch back um, and raked it out all nice and even um, just a few days ago. And now I'm moving it all again and putting this area in upheaval. It's crazy how much mulch was put down. Like, I don't know, six or eight inches it feels like of mulch on top of all this. It's just crazy. There's a bird. There's a bird with corn in its mouth. Get out. All right, we're gonna come over here and we're gonna cover up the corn I just planted. Show that bird, it's not gonna get my corn. To do it. I'll leave this extra here because I have to cut bird netting to go over each one of these bags uh, soon. I already planted the pumpkins and melon seeds, something I just had to do real quick um, off camera just to get it done. So yeah, all these need to be covered because the squash bugs are so bad here and the vine borers that the plants will never survive. The vine borers We'll take them out first, and then if they manage to survive, then um, they won't be very strong or healthy, and I might not even get anything off the plants. If they manage to live, they'll use all their energy in living and not actually producing. So I'm going to cut large pieces. I have a bunch of this stuff, so cut it, place it around. The sticks that you can see on all the bags are gonna be to prop the netting up, and then I will clip it to the bag or use landscape staples to staple it into the dirt, uh, whatever seems right at the time. So I'll cut off of this and then I have more that I'll cut into pieces and then I'll just save those because I'll need to do the same thing every year because every year the vine borers are here and the squash bugs are here. So uh, I should give the plant a lot of time to be able to get a fairly decent size before it can no longer be contained inside of the grow bag and the netting and all that and then I'll take it all off and let it do its thing and uh, the vine borers are only actively boring and putting their spawn inside plants or the dirt or whatever they do for a short period of time I think it's like six weeks actually so not that short uh, so I just hope I can keep the plants contained until the, born, the vine borers are no longer doing their thing. So I need to Google that and find out the actual dates because I remember looking it up before and I was like, oh, there's hope for the plants because the vine borers aren't doing it the whole summer, just this window of time where they're trying to procreate their future generations, I guess is how you could put it. So. All right, back to the task at hand. I think corn only takes like four or five days to germinate. I need to look that up. Um, so I won't have to keep it on there long. I'll, I'll come out and check on them often. And whenever they've germinated, I'll take the netting off. Um, 
But yeah, so that won't be on there that long. And then hopefully when they get, I don't know, six and, I guess when the corn gets like a foot tall is when I should move the mulch back um, around. Like I have to be careful. But if the pile of mulch was six to eight inches tall, I could be exaggerating. I don't know for sure. Okay, let's say it's six inches tall. Well, then I can't, I have to wait till the corn's taller than that before I can move the mulch back because uh, otherwise it would just bury the corn. So this is going to be ugly again over here for the next few weeks probably, which is sad, but I will be glad when it, when, you know, everything has to start somewhere and it'll just be, is that a strawberry? Oh. Do you see that? That red? Oh my goodness! I saw it from across the yard and I wasn't sure if that was a leaf, but it was so red. That is the first strawberry. <gasps> okay, so now I know that we have to start uh, looking for strawberries regularly. Right there. Oh my goodness. And the birds didn't get it yet. <laughs> Look at that. Ah. Ideally, one more day would be better to harvest, um, just because there's a little bit of light color right there. But with it poking out there, <laughs> there's no way a bird wouldn't notice it. And look, this strawberry here is starting. That's so cool. I wonder if I need to put netting around this whole thing. Probably oughta. But I'm just so impressed because this laundry basket was a total experiment and the strawberries weren't super happy with being here, but they quickly got used to it and they were good with it. So, I'm oh, so happy. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you something while we're over here. See the strawberries on the fence there, the pouch? Um, we did the laundry, stra strawberries in a laundry basket in one video, and then we did the strawberries on that pouch thingy on the fence. Well, they're, they still haven't perked up. They're still droopy. They're not super happy about it. Those pockets do not stay moist long enough. Those things need to be watered multiple times a day. And so I don't even know what is a good idea to put in there, to, to plant in there. Something with shallow roots that can be in the shade, because it's pretty shaded over there. I mean, like lettuce obviously would qualify, but I'd have to put netting over it, which is doable. Just put netting right over the top of it. So if anything, in order to utilize that, it might have to be lettuce. But I'm just going to leave the strawberries in there and see what happens. A lot of them have fruited. Wow, there's a swarm of flies. Do you see those? It's starting to rain. It's not supposed to rain till 4, so this is dumb. I might have to bring y'all inside while I finish up. And look, those are all the strawberries. Those are, that's three 100-gallon strawberry containers. And so they're, they're pretty large. I mean, they're the size, the equivalent of a four by four garden bed. So yeah, do the math, whatever. So there's a lot of strawberries in there. So now, now that I found this from uh, Unhappy Transplant, I can't imagine what those that didn't have to be moved at all, that's where they've been. I can only imagine what they're producing. So I'll have to go uh, sift around in there and, and hunt for strawberries and see what we got. I know there's a lot forming. You can probably you can probably see it. I can't get my finger in the right spot. All over the place. There's a lot of strawberries forming. So it's just a matter of time before we are overcome with strawberries, which I'm not going to complain about. I will make strawberry jam, eat a million a day fresh because they're just that good. These ones are the ones I have here are just so sweet, better than anything I've ever tasted from the store. So that's super exciting. While we're here, I guess I know I'm talking a lot, but. Oh well, that's where we transplanted the rest of the strawberries. I had them lined up along the edge, which would be like right there, that edge. But uh, I decided to move them over there. So that's nice. Oh, I see, oh, I see one strawberry that's like a third red and the rest is like a yellowish. So we have one strawberry in there that I can see from here that's gonna be ready in a few days. So yeah, that's, that's the progress in all the strawberries. I hadn't planned on going over that in this video, but I got this, so I had to. Yay! It's really actually raining, like it's coming down, so I'm gonna get you guys inside. You know what's really cool? 
You can hear me through the door. I'm gonna taste the strawberry. Mmm, first strawberry of the season. It's so soft. It's not as sweet as I usually get, but I think that's because it just needed another day. But, oh well, because I don't want the birds getting it. Yum. Okay, friends, I don't want you to be uncomfortable in the rain, so you just watch from in there. And I'll stay out here. I, unless it pours, I'm not gonna come in quite yet. Hopefully I can get this done. So have fun watching from way over there. <laughs> Somebody planted a peanut <laughs> or something. Finally, on to the next part, all the mulches up. So over there I did uh, six wide and then however many long, I don't know. I don't think six is gonna fit here. It's just, you can probably see, it's just not perfectly symmetrical with the corner of the fence and where everything's placed. If I had been more intentional with the way this was going to be shaped in the beginning, then I would have made this corner match up with the corner of the fence there and then placed everything, like placed the gate, arch, trellis thingy, and the arbor to, um, to face the corner and then they would be, you know what I'm saying. So anywho, didn't think that through. It was just a went like, let's have a pumpkin patch. Let's just do it. And didn't measure anything, just based on where the trampoline was and the fire pit. This is just how, the, how big we decided to make it. Um, so it's just, it is what it is. I could have fixed it before I put all this stuff in, but didn't really care that much at the time. So anywho, this row is gonna be a little skinnier than that row of corn. And I probably could have made that smaller than this, but oh well, hindsight is never helpful. Rarely is it helpful. So let's just do it and see how many, how wide we get it. The most time consuming parts done, the moving the mulch and digging the holes with the little auger. Now I just have to like lean over like I did and kind of straddle the space and plant the corn seeds as I walk along and then the reason I did that was because the mulch is so high that if I stepped on it I'd probably kick it into the holes and I don't want to do that. So I need to do that, plant the seed that way and then cover it with some soft potting soil and then cover it with netting and that will be all we need to do for the corn. You see that bird looking for the worms that I left behind for it? Oh, they found something. Find the grubs, eat the grubs. So uh, you can probably see the rain. Uh, so whenever the rain slows down, I'll get back out there because the rest to do is not that time consuming, luckily. Rain stopped, so let's try to get this done really fast. Oh no, it didn't stop. So we got rained out and I had to finish it on a different day off camera just to do it real quick. So both sides are done the same way. You saw how I did the first side and I did the same thing over here. Um, I don't think anything's popped up yet. It's only been a few days since we did it. So just wanted to end the video with a goodbye and let you see that it was done. Sadly, it's a mess because all the mulch, I got it all nice and pretty and now the mulch is 
push over to the side. So we'll get it all nice and pretty again. It'll just take probably a few weeks, sadly. Oh wait, did I tell you what we planted? I'm not even sure if I mentioned it. So I got in bulk at a local box store. I think it was Rural King, no, Tractor Supply. Um, sweet corn bilicious hybrid. I can't remember if I told you previously. So I just wanted to make sure I did show you. I haven't grown this particular one, so it's bilicious. So hopefully that means delicious and it's a sweet corn. So I'll let you know how it pans out. Look at this. It's been about two weeks and we have great germination. A few didn't come up, so I reseeded in a few spots, but it's awesome. Actually, I think it's been more than two weeks now. I come out here and hand water it every day. Oh. Gotta thin that one. Oh, and that one. I got a couple. I have two. I thought I already thinned them. I guess I didn't thin them all. But yes, look at that. We're gonna have so much corn. So it's five wide on this side, six wide on that side. Not quite symmetrical, but that's all right. All right, thanks for being here. Say bye, Tater. Tater, say bye. What? No, look at me, Tater. Here, Tater. Wait, what? Okay, bye y'all. Thanks for watching.